Hello everyone, Seraphin here. Welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Blazing Sword. Uh, when we last left our heroes, we were finishing up Chapter 7, so we're going to be moving on today to Chapter 8, Vortex of Strategy. And we're getting ever so much closer to our goal in Kalen down here. Oh, actually, we've arrived in Kalen officially, I believe. But now that jerk face is ruling everything. Well, that's not cool. What in the heck is that? A special weapon. Ah yes, the distant mountains. Just two more days. Like he's gonna miraculously get better as soon as they show up. I mean, he's still being poisoned, right? Part of the motivational speaker of this chapter will be played by Florina. The irony. Oh yes, and here's Nil showing off his special power of knowing when danger is going to happen. Oh snap! A bolt. Yes, that particular device is a ballista. Uh, for those of you not acquainted with what a ballista is, it is a very large uh, tension-powered bow, effectively. They were used as siege engines uh, many centuries ago. This is actually a little bit predating medieval times, but... The idea is that, yeah, it's just a big old bow. And this is Sane telling Florina, don't you dare take to the air because you're going to get shot out of the air immediately. And under normal circumstances, he'd be right. That would be devastating. However, we have a plan. That's one way of putting it. Oversimplification is the best tactic we have. Ah uh, yes, Matthew will not be available in this level. Because he has some spying to do. Given the fact that he's, you know, a spy. So we get nine units to deploy out of our available twelve. We can't pick Matthew. We don't really want Dorcas anyway, and we don't really need Wrath. Although he might actually be useful for this, so I'll consider bringing him. Uh, despite what Sane said, Florina actually is a very good choice for this, because she can reach the Ballista very quickly and take out the Operator in almost immediately before danger to anybody else is even a problem. isn't even a problem. So what I'll probably do is bring her anyway. Uh, I also do kind of want to train up Sane a little bit. I know that sounds weird, because I was only going to pick one of them, but uh, the nice thing about once Lin's story is over, it preserves all of these level ups you've done into the next area of the game. And it's actually like a fork in the road, so to speak, so when I go through and do Ellawood's quest later on, and then eventually Hector's, I can start with the same stats that these guys are going to have by the end of Lin's chapter, which would be great. And I plan on using one of them for Ellawood's and the other for Hector's, so I might as well train them both up. Uh, Dorcas I don't plan on using at all, because he's just unfortunately not very good. Uh, Wrath is quite good, but he requires a lot of babying, unfortunately. He's very good in this section of the game, and he's very good when you get him back, but he's very under-leveled when you get him again, so... What I'll probably end up doing is give him at least a few levels beforehand. Uh, we need Will, because I want to use that Ballista. The Ballista gives you an unbelievable amount of weapon experience. 
Uh, we definitely want a healer, so I think we're just going to leave the current composition as it is, to be honest with you. Nobody's above level 6. Kent's our highest level unit, so is Lin, I guess. Maybe next chapter we'll start bringing Wrath, but for right now we're just going to keep with what we got. And Matthew did say if we need any of his stuff to take it now. Uh, I don't believe we're going to need any of his stuff. I'm pretty sure everybody's pretty well decked out. Oh, Urk's a little low on fire there, it looks like. Probably should have grabbed one of those a couple chapters ago, but... Uh, we don't need this hammer, so we're going to let Dorcas hold on to it for now. Doesn't look like we need Matthew's sword either. Well, maybe we'll trade it for this one. He doesn't generally need it as much. And that will effectively give Sane a whole one, a 45 one. Actually, it's 46. That's beside the point. Alright, I think we're going to be good for right now. So again, we're actually going to put Florina right in front, because I want her to get to that Ballista as quickly as possible. Uh, she is quite fast, so I believe even with the speed loss from the Javelin, she should be able to take, to take this guy down in one round. The thing with the Ballista is, you can't check the stats of it while the... Oh, actually, the Archer's not even manning it right now. It's weird. He was a second ago. But when he occupies that Ballista, it is very large and very heavy and makes him very immobile. You can move while in the Ballista, but only a limited amount of mobility per turn. I believe it's only four squares. And the thing weighs about 20. So, obviously, it's going to be no speed for him. So as long as Florina has at least four speed with that Javelin equipped, which it looks like she will, then we should be fine. And I will have Nils on station to let her move again, if so desired. Kent and Sane will stay in the back. Lucius is going to go deal with these mages over here because he's in a position to properly do that. And Urk's actually going to be a frontline unit this time. That sounds crazy, I know, but... Well, I'll let Will do it, I lied. Nope, change my mind again. Alright, let's get rolling, shall we? So, first things first, we're going to let Florina come down here. How far can those move? I don't want him getting hit by mages. So we're gonna park him right. We're gonna park him right. Hmm. If I get her too closer, then she can use the. She can use her melee weapon instead of her javelin to take that guy down. Now, the only real problem is once I do take that guy down with the javelin. That's going to allow the other archer to come right up into his place. Fortunately, the ballista has a range of 3 to 10 squares. So if I'm only 2 away, he'll have to shoot at me with his own regular bow. He won't be able to use the ballista against me. And his regular iron bow, I can take one hit from, but I don't want to take more than one. Because that would be painful. And if I move directly next to the ballista, then one of these cavaliers is going to run right up and whack me. In fact, both of them might. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So we're going to park Florina right here. Let's make sure she can't get... Oh yeah, she'll be fine there. We're going to park her right here, and we're going to whip this javelin at this guy's face. And Ballista is effectively nullified. Unless that archer gets in it and uses it to shoot somebody else, I sincerely doubt that'll be the case. More than likely, he'll just want to go for the effective weapon damage against Florina, as I believe the AI is programmed to get the uh, best quality shot that they can get. And we're going to move Lucius over here to deal with these guys. And the rest of the party will move down this way. And we'll have Sarah as a backup in case people need healing, which they probably will. Um, let's have Kent check out this armory and see if there's anything good in here. More swords, lances, uh, all four of the weapons. Uh, I don't think anyone's in dire need of physical weapons. It's mostly magic tomes that we're running low on. Oh, definitely not. So that shop isn't going to be all that useful to us at the moment, but that's all right. Now well, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, this mage is going to go for her too. The problem is her resistance is so high that he's not going to do anything to her. Yeah, but she's not quite fast enough to hit him back twice. But she will get a level up out of this. Uh, not a great one, unfortunately. 
Yep, as I thought, he's just gonna use his regular bow. Which stings quite a bit. But she'll be okay. And then we bring Lucius in here to deal with this mage that is harassing my Pegasus. And see, again, even with the triangle disadvantage, he outright destroys that mage and would have taken nothing in return from him. More magic and more resistance, just getting more and more of what he's already good at. So again, I don't want to park Florina here to retaliate, or to take this archer out in melee, because not all these guys will come flooding at her. So we'll just stay right where she is and javelin this guy to death, and really hope that she hits, because if she doesn't, we're going to be in trouble. And she crits, so no worries there. Would have been nice if she'd done that the first time, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. So now, we have no archers to worry about. The ballista is effectively neutered, so we just have to clean up these guys that are coming at us in melee range. And we will send Sane to soften up this mercen- holy smokes, talk about softening up. And then we will allow... who needs them more? Will or Urk? I think they're both the same level. We'll let Urk do it, or Will do it, only because he can take hits easier from those Cavaliers than Urk can. So he's gonna be a little bit closer. And Urk ought to be able to take out one of these guys. Can these soldiers reach me if I take him down? Uh, one of them can, but so can the Cavalier. That is, unless I kill that one instead. And then only one Cavalier gets to me. They'll probably go for Will, actually, anyway, because they he can't counter against them. So Urk will probably be just fine. And if not, well, that's my fault. Yeah, they can't quite reach him. So just that Cavalier he has to worry about. In fact, I can let Sane move again. And kind of wall off this area here. Which will allow Lynn to move in right behind him. I'll give her the money Kati in case that Cavalier goes for her. Nobody over here is hurt, so... We don't really need Sarah. I'll have her heal Florina in a minute here, but... I'll just make sure nobody can get my Yeah, she's fine. And then we have this guy. He's actually the boss. I didn't go down that far to look at him, but... Apparently we're just fleas. And what he's going to start having do now... So I'll show you as soon as this is done. Oh, same doubling this guy and putting him out of his misery. Those soldiers are just the worst. Cavalier goes for Urk. I believe he'll be okay. Oh yeah, he's fine. He's not gonna like it, but he'll be fine. And now we have somebody for Sarah to heal, so that's actually good. Lucius utterly crushes this poor guy. It's such a gratifying noise. And he crits him into his face. Talk about a smite if I ever saw it. So from now, for the next few turns at least, we're going to have two more soldiers spawn out of these forts for the next few turns. Here's the boss right here, by the way, <laughs> Yogi. Uh, he is using a peculiar weapon. This is an Axe Reaver. So, Reaver weapons, there's one for each class. There's an Axe Reaver for lances, there's a Sword Reaver for axes, and there's a Lance Reaver for swords. And they actually reverse the weapon triangle. So, instead of this lance being good against swords, it's actually good against axes, but it's bad against swords to make up for that. And not only do they reverse the triangle, they double the effects of it. So instead of an extra damage and an extra 15 hit percent, it's 2 extra damage and 30% extra hit chance. That is unless you're using them against each other. So if you've got an Axe Reaver up against a Lance Reaver, then it's, they're, it's not going to double the effects, but it will still reverse it. And in that case, the Axe Reaver still beats the Lance Reaver. So when you use them against each other, it's like a double negative. They just go back to being normal. And actually, all these guys down here on these forts have one of those Reaver weapons. 
So the Sword Reaver here, another Axe Reaver here, and then this guy has a Lance Reaver. This bloke over here just has a regular Axe, though. Now, you don't see a whole lot of Reaver weapons from enemy units on the board. There's maybe a few chapters where they're kind of prominent, but for the most part, they're very few and far between. And this guy is actually explaining literally what I just explained, and he's about to give us a Lance Reaver, though. That is going to come in handy very much so in a couple of chapters. Oh good, at least he's admitting that he's rambling and actually giving me something for it. That's the other thing, the Reaver weapons require a level of C to use, so they're rather prohibitive for very low level units that don't have the weapon skills required. Lynn does, I believe she's level, yeah, she's at least level C. Kent is as well, but Sane not quite so much. So we're just going to mop up this soldier here. Bill doesn't get a chance to double very often, but when he does... And we'll send Sane for You know, I'm going to heal him with Sarah first. And we'll send him forward to be kind of our meat shield. He's got the most respectable defense out of anybody around right now. Except Kent, obviously, but it's only because we've been giving him more attention. I think the magic sweet spot is right here. None of those guys can hit me. Yeah. And we'll have Florina come join the rest of us. And Nils will have Sarah move over and heal her too. Yep, there's those soldiers, and they're just going to come right over that little bridge and straight at us. Yeah, irk has been damaged. I forgot all about that. Maybe I should heal him. So one thing I wanted to note real quick. Uh, there's only ten chapters in Lin's quest. And as soon as you finish Chapter 10, you have the option of breaking into either Ellawood or Hector's Tale. Uh, for the most part, Ellawood and Hector's story are identical. As in, story events that happen are the same for both of them, but there are some di gameplay differences. For example, Hector's is, I believe, at least two or three chapters longer than Ellawood's quest. It's also considered to be a bit harder, and some of the chapters are different as far as... Um, the very first chapter, for example, in both of them in Chapter 11, is completely different depending on which of the two of them you pick. So what I'll probably end up doing is doing Ella Woods first, only because it's slightly easier and has less in it, and then progress to Hector's from the same split at level 10. That way I don't need to do this whole, this whole setup again. I don't have a problem with Lin's quest as a, per se, but sometimes it gets a little tedious given that it's it's really easy. And the only reason to do it is to give some extra experience to the people that rejoin you later that you get in this part of the game. So, if I did not play through Lin's quest first, then all these people that I'm using right now would show up again in Ellawood and Hector's quest. However, they would be... they'd have a standard flat level, and they'd have predetermined stats. And it would be no, there'd be nothing random to it. They might they they're not they don't get screwed per se, but having the opportunity to level them yourselves is much more beneficial. Not only because they can be higher level, but because they can just get better stat spreads. For example, there is no way I'd have a Florina this good at level six if I had gotten her without using her here. Sane's turning out to be kind of mediocre, unfortunately. He hasn't gained a single. No defense, no resistance, like one point of speed and maybe one point of skill. The rest has all been strength. It's a little bit disappointing, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. But now that he's level 6, we're gonna let somebody else steal the spotlight here for a minute. It's probably gonna be Florina. Well, she's level 6 also. Uh, Urk is not yet, so I might let him do it. I just don't want to worry about him getting 
skewered by these Lance guys. He's only got two defense. He'll survive with three HP. That's good enough for me. And he'll actually, he'll be down to a, be down to the wire here on Fire Tomes. Thankfully, I believe there is an, an ability to get more of them coming up, so we're not completely hosed. I really should have grabbed another one while I was in Chapter 7. I didn't think about it. He's actually going to miss. That's good. Now I don't have 3 HP. I'll have 12 instead. Unless the other guy misses too, then I'll be fine. Nope, he didn't. Alright, that's fine. That is the one drawback of weapons having ammunition in this game. I think it's a neat little gameplay element. Oh, look at that, exactly enough. Well, that's not ideal. I do think it's an interesting gameplay mechanic. It means that you have to kind of think about the weapons that you give to people and manage your inventory and all that fun stuff. I like that aspect of games, of RPGs in particular. A lot of people complain about the fact that, why does my sword have ammo? Well, I mean, if you used it all the time, eventually it'd get pretty worn down. It may not break necessarily, but it, it wouldn't be sharp anymore. I guess you could just argue that buying a new sword is the same as buying a whetstone for your existing one or something to that effect, but again, I don't have a big issue with it. So we want to use a sword against these guys. Because sword will be good against this one and neutral against that. I won't have any disadvantages to worry about. So we're going to let Lin take care of these guys. As long as I'm out of range of that sword reaver, we should be fine. And in fact, I'll probably let Florina take him down. I'll wait drag the rest of my guys in here. I should be playing on every turn to get him the XP that he needs. I need to get Nils to level 7 before we end Lin's quest, and there is a reason for that. However, I'm not going to spoil it now because it is important to the story, and you're not going to be seeing it for quite some time anyway. In fact, the reason for getting to level 7 is not relevant until we get about midway through Hector's quest. So you won't be seeing it for a long time, but trust me, it's important. If you plan on playing this game yourself and you want to go through Hector's quest, uh, make every effort to get Nils to level 7 before the end of Nils' quest. You can kind of cheese it in the last couple levels because you've got unlimited time to do so. It's going to kill your tactic score, unfortunately. Uh, I, you know, I just realized I haven't gone over that at all. The, there's a, I guess, a, tr a uh, tactician rating uh, before, you, before you even load up a save. If you go to like the options menu, there's a tactician rating board. And it ranks you on five different factors. The amount of, the amount of turns it took you to beat the game how much money you had left, or how much you invested in assets, uh, how many of your characters survived up until the end, that kind of thing. And if you take too long, there's a pre-programmed amount of turns that each level is supposed to take you. If you take longer than the sum of all of that, you get a bad tactics score. And unfortunately, my tactics scores don't generally end up being more than three out of five stars, only because I like to take my time and kind of turtle a little bit. I know some of you are going, why in the heck would you want to do that? Well, you know, I like that's how I play a lot of games. I just like to take my time, think about my strategies. I mean, obviously it's not tracking your actual gameplay time, it's just tracking the amount of turns it took you. But even so, I tend to come up with some pretty complicated plans to do stupid things, and it takes a while, so. So what we're going to do is let... Berk, fuse up his fire tome against this guy. It won't kill him unless he crits. And there goes his fire book. Suddenly he forgot how to cast spells. It's amazing how that works. And then we're going to let Will finish him off. Actually, I'm going to get Nils one more play here. The more I can do that without having to waste turns in another level is ideal. Just enough. Look at that. Oh, 
the naivete. Alright, Will. Eh, that's okay. I would have preferred speed or strength, but I'll take what I can get. Pretty easy chapter. Once you take care of that ballista, then you have really nothing to worry about. Yep. Well, he's got a point. No, I imagine if you got a four-foot bolt through your chest, you wouldn't be it wouldn't be around much. Even if that hit like her leg or something, she's not walking on that. Oh, look at this clever guy walking out of nowhere. Oh boy, here we go. Sacrilege! Oh wait, sorry, wrong chapter. No! Never would have called that one. Yeah, isn't that a conundrum? Even though everybody knows it, no one's going to do anything about it. It's, an, it's, a little, it's a little real, I think, for an RPG like this. Really not though. She's not the real Anastasia. It's amazing what propaganda can do. This is how World War II happened, folks. Yes, of course. We must come up with a strategy. Perhaps a vortex of strategy. I'll shut up now. Oh yeah, that guy that I just met the one time. That said he wanted to be my best friend. Yeah, so let's backtrack several days ride in the hope that this guy can help us. At any rate, we'll get to that in the next time. So that has been Chapter 8. We'll move on to Chapter 9 next time. It's a bit of a long one, but we'll see how we can do on it. Uh, that being said, though, I'm going to call it for here. I have been Seraphin. Thank you for joining me again. I will see you next time. <laughs>